Gotta catch mm all. The ultimate completionist mantra that filled the ears and captured the hearts of every kid that grew up playing and watching Pokemon in the late 90s and early 2000s. These four words are responsible for creating an entire generation of people obsessed with collecting every type of bug, bird, monkey, and whatever the heck Conkledur is. We've been wandering through tall grass and endlessly chucking balls at these creatures for the last three decades, all in the pursuit of that simple directive, catching them all. In the first generation of games, catching all the Pokemon and filling out the Pokedex is actually the primary objective. Professor Oak doesn't say anything about battling gym leaders or becoming the champion. He gives you a blank encyclopedia and says, hey, go find and catch every Pokemon so I can complete my research. Then he gives you a Pokemon to get you started and sends you out into the world. Taking on the gym leader challenge and becoming the champion is just this other thing you happen to do along the way. The only reason you fight Brock in Pewter City is because this guy won't let you go to the next route until you have a gym badge, and you need to get past him to continue your journey and find more Pokemon. Catching them all is the entire point of Gen 1 Pokemon. So what would the game look like if I didn't catch any? I choose Bulbasaur as my starter because it'll be really useful against the first two gems. Honestly, Bulbasaur is a pretty great pick for the entire Kanto region because it's great against Brock, Misty, Giovanni, Bruno, and all of the countless hikers and fishermen spread out all over the region. Plus, it resists Lieutenant Surge's, Erika's, Koga's, and Agatha's teams. This makes it really useful for challenge runs where you have limited access to Pokemon like this one, especially in the early game. While I'm moving towards the first gem, let me explain the additional rules I added to this run just to make it a little bit more exciting. First, no catching Pokemon. This is pretty obvious. I can only use Pokemon that I attain through means other than catching it. Number two, no fainting. Originally, I thought I'd do this challenge as a Nuzlocke, but I didn't want to completely start over if I messed up, so I decided against it. Instead, I'm doing sort of a pseudo Nuzlocke, where if any of my Pokemon ever faint, I reset to the last save. Number three, no items in battle. That's pretty simple. And finally, Level caps. Level caps mean I can't level up any of my Pokemon past the next gym leader's highest level Pokemon. For example, Brock's Onyx is level 14, so my Bulbasaur can't be higher than level 14 going into the Brock fight. And with that, we're here at Brock, who goes down incredibly easily to a few Vine Whips. Nothing too exciting or surprising there. Soon after leaving the gym, my Bulbasaur evolves, and believe it or not, we actually get our second team member here. You can buy a Magic Carp from this guy in the Pokemon Center for a measly 500 Poke Dollars. It's only level 5, and it only knows Splash, so it's pretty worthless, but it'll be super worth it, I swear. While traveling through Mount Moon, I switch train Magikarp, being careful not to level up Ivysaur too much since the level cap for Misty is 21. At the end of the cave, I decide to pick up the Dome Fossil, which is technically another Pokemon for our team, but I won't actually be able to get the Kabuto from the fossil until way later in the game. For now, I'm still pretty much just solo running with Ivysaur. Next up is Misty, who, like Brock, shouldn't really be any sort of challenge for my team. One Vine Whip from Ivysaur is enough to take out Staryu, but it surprisingly doesn't do a ton of damage to Starmie. I'm a little concerned about my health, so I use Leech Seed. Then I use Poison Powder instead of Vine Whip because I know Misty is going to heal on the next turn, so there's absolutely no way I can take it out anyway. She heals. Then I just Vine Whip twice, and the Leech Seed Poison combo helps me take it out pretty quickly. Another easy victory. After Misty, I immediately head over to rival number two. I start the fight off with Magikarp, and then I switch in Ivysaur. Leech Seed lands first try, and Razor Leaf almost takes Pidgeotto out. I'm able to knock it out on the next turn. Now, this was a big mistake. For some reason, I switched to Magikarp? I, I really wanted to level it up, but I think I should have chosen a better time to do this. Surprisingly, it looks like I still might defeat Charmander, and it takes me out. Okay, so I try this a few more times, and all of my attempts go basically the exact same way. So what do I do? My Magikarp still has two more levels before it learns Tackle, and switch training against the rival is just not going well. Even if I get past Charmander like this, he has 
two more Pokemon. And I can't switch train Magikarp too much against wild Pokemon because I'll pass the level cap with Ivysaur too early. I need to try something different. Well, the obvious choice is to stop switch training Magikarp and just solo the rival with my Ivysaur, but for some reason, I spend the next 15 minutes trying to use Splash against wild Pokemon until it ran out of PP, healing outside of battle with the limited number of potions I have, and then trying to defeat Pokemon with struggle. This is, as we say in the Pokemon business, a stupid idea. Luckily, I didn't try this for very long, and after a while I decided to try the rival battle with Ivysaur out first. It goes really well. I start off by using Leech Seed, and then, because Pidgeotto used Sand Attack, lowering my accuracy, I decide to switch out for Magikarp. This will actually get rid of the lowered accuracy. Finally, he's actually useful. Now, it's kind of just a waiting game until Pidgeotto faints from Leech Seed, so I use Splash over and over again. I have a very close call with this quick attack, almost taking Magikarp out, so I decide to switch back to Ivysaur and finish the job. For Charmander, I go for the Leech Seed Poison Powder combo. As long as I don't get burned, Leech Seed heals me enough to keep me alive. Abra only knows Teleport, so I decide to switch Magikarp in for some experience points, and Rattata goes down really easily to one Razor Leaf. I'm glad I didn't spend too much time trying to train Magikarp, because this battle was a lot easier than I was making it out to be. Eventually, Magikarp reaches level 15 and learns Tackle, meaning I officially have two actual usable Pokemon. I train him up a little bit more, and at level 20, it evolves into Gyarados, an actual really good Pokemon. It's cool to get access to this guy in this run. I make it to Vermilion City, head to the SSN, pretty easily beat my rival with with my new Gyarados and get the HM for Cut. Unfortunately, because I can't catch anything, I have to teach Cut to Ivysaur. I head inside the gym and oh boy do I hate this trash puzzle. It's literally a trash puzzle that is also a trash puzzle. Who thought this was fun? Eventually, I do find both buttons, and now it's time for Lieutenant Surge. Like the first two gems, this one shouldn't be too difficult. Honestly, I think I could have beaten it on the first try if I hadn't gotten a little unlucky by being paralyzed and then Raichu using multiple double teams. On my second attempt, Voltorb gets knocked out with a critical hit Razor Leaf. Pikachu survives one Razor Leaf and manages to paralyze me, but it goes down after another hit. Raichu starts off by spamming double team, but I'm somehow able to poison it. Then Lieutenant Surge uses a full heal, but I manage to hit another poison powder. After that, all I have to do is survive long enough to win. Ivysaur is pretty bulky and resists electric moves, so there's no real issue. Nothing super interesting happens as I go through Rock Tunnel. I make it to Lavender Town and immediately head over to Celadon to collect my next Pokemon and the best little guy in the whole wide world. Eevee. Very fortunately, this Eevee is already at level 25, which is right around where my other Pokemon already are, so I don't really have to do much to train it up for the next gym. I get some tea from an old lady, and then this Clefairy just won't let me leave. I head into gym number 4, and after battling all the trainers for some nice leveling up, it's time to face Erika. Now, I'll be honest, Erika was the first gym leader I was actually a little nervous for, because while I do have some good Pokemon, I don't have anything that's really good against Against her team. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have Eevee, who is the best, most powerful, strongest top tier Pokemon in the whole game, but I mean, I don't want all the responsibility to land on him. Luckily, I discovered Gyarados learns the move Dragon Rage at level 25. Dragon Rage does a guaranteed 40 damage every single time it's used. That might not sound like a lot, but here in the early-ish section of the game, that's a big deal. I give Gyarados a Lumberry to hold just because I know Erika is going to either poison or paralyze me. By the the way, this doesn't count as using items in battle. At least I don't think so, but if this does upset you, I don't think I ever do it again in the entire run. I use a handful of Dragon Rages against Victory Bell and Tangela. Tangela got me down pretty low on health, so I decided to switch to Eevee. It does a really great job by landing a single quick attack, and just because I think it deserves a break, not for any other reason, I switched to Ivysaur. Unfortunately, I don't really have anything that I can do against this Vile Plume except use Cut. I'm preparing myself to reset, but somehow, Ivysaur just barely scoots by. For some reason, I didn't do the rocket hideout next like you're supposed to. Instead, I go back to Lavender Town to battle my rival. And with the incredible power of spamming Dragon Rage, it's a piece of cake. I go back to the game corner in Celadon to clear out the rocket hideout, 
but after a couple of battles, I decided I still didn't feel like doing this quite yet. Instead, I walk to Saffron City and work my way through the fighting dojo. Dragon Rage makes pretty easy work of the trainers in here, including the dojo leader. Gyarados does almost get knocked out by Hitmonchan, but I'm able to win on my first try. The real reason I came here was to pick up my next Pokemon, Hitmonchan. Team Rocket Grunts use a lot of Rotatas and Raticates, and since Hitmonchan is a fighting type, it can easily deal with Team Rocket's mouse infestation. Also, after leveling up just once, it learns three new elemental moves. Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, and Fire Punch. These will help a lot against all the Zubats and Golbats that Team Rocket also uses. Also, my team so far doesn't do great against Grass Pokemon, so Fire Punch could really come in handy. Get it? Punch. Handy. Anyways, Rocket Hideout is pretty uneventful until we reach Giovanni, who I beat super easily with Ivysaur's Razor Leaf and Hitmonchan's Mach Punch. I pick up the Sylph Scope and go back to Lavender Tower for real this time. Again, this area is actually pretty uneventful. I make my way to the top, take out the Rocket Grunts, and get the Poke Flute from Mr. Fuji. I immediately go back to Saffron and make my way to Sylph Co. I battle a few Team Rocket members, but I wanted to try the rival battle before committing to clearing out this entire building. I'm a little underleveled, but I'm curious to see how it goes. The two Pokemon types my team does not fare well against are Flying types and Psychic types, and unfortunately, my rival has both of those on his team. I start with Hitmonchan to try and take out Pidgeot with Ice Punch and Thunder Punch. This doesn't go very well, but after some floundering, Dragon Rage takes it out. I switch back to Hitmonchan for Gyarados in hopes that I'll outspeed and knock it out in one hit, but I get taken out right away. I decided to try again, this time with Gyarados out first. Dragon Rage takes Pidgeot out a lot easier than last time. So now I can switch to Hitmonchan, and I'm actually able to use Thunder Punch. But wow, it does barely any damage for some reason. Then I get taken down by Dragon Rage of all things. I try this fight a few more times with a few different strategies, and some of them even seem like they might work, but eventually I realize there's just no way to guarantee this win without leveling up some more. So I give up on defeating this fellow child trainer for now, and go back to beating up grown adults. One overthrowing of an entire criminal enterprise later, I return to fight the rival. And it really doesn't go much better. The biggest issue is really just Charizard. If I had a good water move for my Gyarados, things would go a lot smoother. Then, I realize, I can go get the HM for Surf right now. I go wake up the Snorlax near Vermilion and head south to Fuchsia City. Oh, also, I haven't mentioned this yet, but even though I have the HM for Fly, I don't have anything that can learn it, so I have to walk everywhere, which is... Not great. Once I arrive, I immediately check out the Safari Zone, which is an absolutely useless place for me to be during this challenge. An area with tons of wild Pokemon encounters, but my only option is to catch them? I can't train my Pokemon here? No thanks. I quickly navigate the Safari Zone maze to pick up the Gold Teeth and to get the HM for Surf. Afterwards, I give the Gold Teeth to the Warden and also get the HM for Strength. After leveling up a bit more on the way back to Saffron, I make it back to the rival fight for another attempt. This battle is going pretty well, except for Gyarados is a little lower on health than I'd like before Charizard comes out, but I decide to keep it in because my only other option is Venusaur. It's at this point that it dawns on me, I forgot to teach Gyarados Surf. Whoops. I lose the battle, obviously. I actually teach Surf to Gyarados, and after a few failed attempts, I finally got this one. I open up with Gyarados, and after a handful of Dragon Rages, Pidgeot goes down. Hitmonchan is a good matchup for Gyarados with Thunder Punch. I get a little lucky against Execute since it misses Paralyzed Powder and then flinches on its second turn. But I mean, come on, with a powerhouse like Eevee, was there ever any doubt? I mean, just look at how easily it knocks out the Salakazam. Now, Eevee probably could have one-shot the Charizard. He probably could have taken down the whole team, no issues, but I wanted to give the rival a fighting chance, so I swap back to Gyarados. It gets hit with Future Sight on the first turn, which kind of freaks me out, but I get super lucky that I have just enough HP left not to get taken out by Flamethrower. After two surfs, the rival is finally defeated. This was probably the hardest battle up to this point. I think it really highlighted the weaknesses in my team. Honestly, my biggest difficulties so far have kind of been making sure I don't overlevel past the level caps, but at this point in the game, I'm actually having to strategize in battles, which is cool. After the fight, our extreme efforts are rewarded with the addition of our next team member, Lapras. And remember when I just said that the game was getting harder? Well, here's how Giovanni went on my very first try. 
He's a ground type user and I have two water types and a Venusaur. Not to mention Eevee. He's doomed against me. After defeating Giovanni, I go to collect my reward. The ultimate Pokemon catching machine, the Master <laughs> I'm just kidding. What am I gonna do with this stupid Master Ball? I can't use it. Up next is Sabrina. Like I mentioned before, Psychic types are a little tricky for my team because two of my Pokemon are super weak to Psychic moves. And I don't really have anything that great against Psychic types other than Gyarados and Eevee who both know Bite. It took some trial and error, but after a couple of tries, I got this attempt. Eevee is pretty easily able to take out Kadabra, no surprise there. I switch to Lapras and use Body Slam until it gets low on health. Then I switch to Gyarados to finish up with Bite. Now Venomoth is honestly one of the biggest problems of this fight because it consistently goes for supersonic. Most of my failed attempts were due to hitting myself in confusion. Normally, Fire Punch would make fairly easy work of Venomoth, but I got unlucky on this attempt because I kept getting confused and hitting myself, so I swapped to Venusaur. Luckily, with Leech Seed and Cut, I'm able to take out Venomoth. Finally, I switch to Gyarados since it has a lot of health left, and I use Bite. But after seeing how little damage it does, I decided to try Dragon Rage for the rest of the battle, and I was just barely able to get a win here. As soon as I finish the Sabrina battle, I go back to Fuchsia to fight Koga. I didn't think Koga would be that difficult, but he actually did give me a little trouble. After a couple of failed attempts, I taught Eevee Dig. Not because it needed another move or anything, just because I wanted to make it seem to Koga like I needed to re-strategize or something. It was Eevee's idea, actually. He's really cunning like that since he's so smart and strong and powerful. And as always, Eevee was right. The mind games worked and we were able to defeat Koga on our very next try. Lapras one-shots coughing with Ice Beam. Eevee uses Dig once against Muck just to prove to Koga that he actually did learn it. Then he swapped places with Lapras because he had some other stuff to go do. Lapras uses a combination of Confuse Ray, Ice Beam, and Surf, and almost takes Muck down, but Koga uses a Hyper Potion and then Muck uses Toxic. So I have to switch in Venusaur to finish the job. I'm able to land Leech Seed, and then it's mostly just waiting until Muck eventually faints. For the next coughing, I use Hitmonchan just because it has full health, and I'm able to defeat it relatively easily. And finally, for Weezing, I hit it with a Leech Seed from Venusaur, and then swap to Gyarados to use Dragon Rage until I win. Not too bad. Most of my resets were due to getting poisoned, and then Muck using Minimize over and over again, so I had a really hard time hitting it. I make my way across the water and through the Seafoam Islands to Cinnabar. Once I arrive, I head to the lab and it's time to get not one, but two more Pokemon. Kabuto is revived from the dome fossil I picked up back in Mount Moon, and I get Aerodactyl from the Amber that I definitely grabbed way back when I first was in Pewter City. I certainly didn't have to walk all the way back there to grab it because I forgot to. It's crazy to think about, but I now have all the Pokemon available to me in this challenge. Not only that, but we actually have more than a full team, so I have to decide who gets to stay and which one Pokemon gets boxed. After thinking it over, I decided to box Kabuto, since I already have two water types. The good news is, now that I have Aerodactyl, I can finally use Fly to get around quicker. I train up Aerodactyl and the rest of my team a bit while I'm going through the Pokemon Mansion to get the secret key. I also take the time to battle all of the trainers in Blaine's gym, and eventually, I reach Blaine himself. Unsurprisingly, he's no challenge at all. Lapras and Gyarados are able to take down his whole team with no issues. As I'm leaving the gym, I run into Bill, and he invites me to the Sevi Islands. Now, normally in a challenge run, I'd probably skip this, but since my Aerodactyl is so underleveled for this part of the end game, I decided to go and do some training. Okay, we're going to very quickly blast through this next part of the game. Here we go. Meet Bill's friend. Oh, the computer's not working yet? Let's go talk to this guy. Oh no, my daughter's missing. I better just stand around and not look for her. Oh no, a biker gang! Save a girl from a creepy hypno, which honestly, creep as heck. I get it, kid. I'd be scared too. Also, your parents named you Lostel and are surprised when you get lost in the woods. I kind of think that's on them. Go talk to Bill again, blah blah blah, and we're back in Viridian City. Hello Giovanni! <laughs> Goodbye Giovanni. Moving on to the penultimate rival fight. This battle gave me some trouble. I wasn't sure if it would because my first attempt actually went really well. Pidgeot is no issue because of Ice Beam. Rhyhorn also isn't a problem. Execute can be a little annoying because even though I have a lot of options for it with Aerodactyl's flying moves and both Eevee and Gyarados have bite, 
none of these options will really one-shot it. If Aerodactyl was a little bit higher leveled, maybe, but I didn't feel like level grinding quite yet. Also, Execute likes to paralyze my team, which can complicate things, but ultimately, not too bad. Gyarados can't really do much to me, but unfortunately, I also can't do much to it. Hitmonchan's Thunder Punch is four times effective, but look at how low the damage is. Since it takes so long to take out, it can chip away at my health for a while, which causes a lot of issues. It actually doesn't do that here, but in other attempts, it would take like three or four of my Pokemon just to knock this Gyarados out. Alakazam is the biggest threat to my team. If it stacks up multiple future sites and psychics the way it does here, I don't think it's possible for me to win this battle. I just can't hit it quite hard enough to take it out quickly, so it can do a ton of damage to me while I'm trying to knock it out. If this happens, it's over by the time Charizard comes out. Even though I have plenty of good options for Charizard, by the time I get to it, all of my Pokemon have been whittled down, so Charizard just knocks out whoever I send out in one move. So even though I made it to Charizard on my first try, I had to do a lot of trial and error to figure out the best way to go against the rival's team. It was a very delicate balance, and I needed a little luck. Eventually, here's how it panned out. Pidgeot goes down to Ice Beam. Rhyhorn is an easy one-hit KO with Surf. I send in Eevee, and I know what you're thinking, why not just knock out the rival's whole team in one shot with Eevee? And you're right, it is that powerful, but that wouldn't really be any fun. Instead, Eevee holds back a little and doesn't knock out Execute right away. It actually lets Execute paralyze it, just so the rival thinks he has a shot. But then Eevee cleans up on the next turn. Then Eevee told me he needed to run to the grocery store, so I swapped in Gyarados. I actually get really lucky here because Alakazam only uses one attacking move before I take it out, and that move was Future Sight. Hitmonchan manages to paralyze Gyarados, but unfortunately the Future Sight almost drops it to zero, so I have to switch to Venusaur. It's a little slow going, but Gyarados does go down. Now, we're finally at Charizard, and because I played it smart, my Gyarados is at full health, so I use one, two, three surfs and win the battle. Notice Charizard still almost took out Gyarados, so I really do think having it at full health was the only way to win. Like I said, I could have trained up Aerodactyl some to make things easier, but after almost winning on the first try, I thought it might be possible with what I already had. So it was pretty cool I actually pulled it off. Nothing of note happens in Victory Road, so let's get to the main event, the Elite Four. I want to start off by acknowledging that I am severely underleveled for the Elite Four on my first attempt. The level cap for Lorelei is 54, and my highest level Pokemon is Gyarados at level 44. Heck, Aerodactyl's only at level 34, but I wanted to give everything a test run to see how close I could get to winning without level grinding. I lead with Venusaur despite its weakness to Ice types because I want to save Hitmonchan for later. With Leech Seed keeping me alive and enough Razor Leaves, I'm able to take out Dugong, but only barely. I switch to Gyarados for Slowbro. Luckily, the hail stopped turn one. Unluckily, Bite does hardly any damage to this thing. So I go for Dragon Rage, which only does slightly better. I go for Bite again, hoping Slowbro will flinch, which it does. So I use a few more Dragon Rages and finally take this bulky thing down. Venusaur comes back out and I use Leech Seed to try and heal myself up for the next Pokemon, but it misses and then this freaking Cloister uses hail and then Protect stalls me. Finally, I just one shot it with Razor Leaf. Now it's time for Hitmonchan to quickly take out Lapras, except for it confuses me, which is scary, but Thunder Punch lands and oh boy does that do no damage at all. Luckily I break out of confusion on the next turn and wow, Mach Punch also does hardly any damage to this thing. Well, so much for Hitmonchan, let's give this Lapras a taste of its own medicine. My Lapras gets confused right away, but it's able to land a Body Slam and a Confuse Ray of its own. But unfortunately, the enemy hits through its confusion and my Lapras almost takes itself out. Time to switch again. I send out Aerodactyl and of course, this Lapras breaks out of confusion right away. I try my luck at an Ancient Power and <laughs> yeah, no way. That does hardly anything. I obviously lose this battle. So that's my first attempt with this underleveled team. It's pretty obvious from just that battle that I need to level up, so I leave to do that. There's a really good spot to level grind back on the Sevi Islands. In this spot on one island, you can get all of these trainers on screen and use the Versus Seeker, and occasionally, all five of them will rebattle you. Then after you defeat them all, you can run into the nearby cave that has a hot spring in it, heal your team, and by the time you walk back outside, your Versus Seeker is charged for another go. Rinse and repeat for a while, and you can level up fairly quickly. At some point, while I was battling wild Pokemon in the area, I actually found this shiny Meowth, which is cool, but since it's a no-catching challenge, 
yeah, that kind of hurt my soul a little. I get everyone on my team up to level 45. I teach Eevee Return, which is a move that gets stronger the more your Pokemon loves you. And I mean, come on, Eevee loves me like so much. Then I give the Elite Four a second try. This time around, somehow goes worse. I don't even make it past Slowbro. So I go back to one island to endlessly fight these trainers and heal in the hot spring until my entire team is level 54. I use the move Deleter in Fuchsia City to get rid of Venusaur's cut and Gyarados's strength. I teach them Solar Beam and Earthquake. I also teach Hitmonchan Brick Break in place of Ice Punch, something I should have done a long time ago. To be honest, those elemental punches haven't been nearly as useful as I thought they'd be. And after about two hours of grinding and reworking movesets, I'm back at Lorelei for my first real attempt. This time, Hitmonchan is out first, and Dugong nearly gets taken out with Brick Break. It uses Hail, which isn't terrible, but it is annoying. Lorelei heals, so I use Mock Punch to make sure my next attack takes it out. Also, notice I made sure to get all of my Pokemon right on the verge of leveling up to 55. This way, they'll all definitely level up right away. Something I haven't mentioned is that while the level cap for each Elite Four member is higher than the last, I don't have any means to level up other than experience points as I make my way through the battles. I didn't allow unlimited rare candies, so I need to get as high a level with my team as possible. Anyway, while I was talking, you no doubt noticed just how annoying this slow bro is. Even at this much higher level, Bite just doesn't do much to him because of how bulky it is. Gyarados also unfortunately isn't able to take it out before falling asleep because of Yawn, but for whatever reason, it kept using Yawn over and over instead of attacking, so once Gyarados woke up, it was free to take it out with one more bite. Venusaur makes easy work of Cloyster with one Razor Leaf, nothing to worry about there. Now for the hard part. Hitmonchan does a lot of damage to Lapras, but it's not strong enough to take it out in one hit. Then Lapras confuses me, and I hit myself in confusion. I decided to take a risk and try attacking again, and I get lucky that Hitmonchan does manage to take out Lapras on its next move. If I had missed, that would have been a reset for sure. I keep playing it risky by keeping Hitmonchan in, and I somehow am able to hit through confusion again, but it doesn't quite take Jinx out. Then Ice Punch knocks out Hitmonchan. Reset. So close. I try a few more times, making slight adjustments to my strategy, and I just can't get past that dang jinx. No matter how much good luck I have, or how much I try to keep Hitmonchan healthy, it gets knocked out every time. And then, after several resets and feeding a couple of zinks to Hitmonchan, I got this attempt. Dugong goes down to a couple of brick breaks and one mock punch after setting up hail and healing once. Slowbro tries to put Gyarados to sleep, but it faints to three earthquakes before that happens. Cloyster gets knocked out by Razor Leaf, which which, by the way, I found out is a range, meaning if the attack rolls low, it will survive the hit. We're back at Lapras now. It takes two brick breaks to take it down. I do hit myself in confusion once, which is scary, but it gives me an idea. Since Hitmonchan is confused and at low health right now, I start to think maybe I should just switch to something else. Then it hits me. Aerodactyl might be able to take care of this. Sure, it's four times weak to Jinx, but it's fast. So let's give it a shot. I go for Ancient Power and boom, one hit KO. Lorelei has been defeated, and that was just the first of five battles I have to win. Yay. Lucky for me, Bruno really shouldn't be a problem because I have a great team to go against him. Surf makes quick work of the first Onyx. Wing attack one hit KOs Hitmonchan. It does not one hit KO Machamp, but instead of attacking me, it goes for bulk up and it uses the citrus berry it's holding, which takes it out of healing range. So I take it out on the next turn, no problem. A second surf for the second Onyx and one last wing attack for Hitmonlee. I didn't take a single point of damage in that fight. Oh, that felt so good after the craziness of Lorelei. But now we have an even more difficult challenge to face, Agatha. If this were Gen 1 instead of Gen 3, I probably wouldn't have a hard time with this because I could just use Earthquake to take down almost her whole team. But because Gen 3 introduced abilities and both Haunter and her two Gengars have Levitate, I can't do that. So I send out my ace in the hole. Eevee. Since it's a normal type, Agatha's ghost Pokemon can't do too much to it in terms of attacking, but they make up for it by being absolute vicious trolls. This Gengar just spams double teams to the point where I can barely touch it. Then it uses Confuse Ray, then it uses Toxic. This is a terrible situation, so I switch to Gyarados. It uses double team again, and then confuses me again. Then it lands a critical hit shadow punch. Yikes. Luckily, Gyarados doesn't take itself out. Now, I'm looking through my team trying to decide what to do. I eventually decide to try out Hitmonchan, and then Agatha heals, which kind of sucks. 
My plan with Hitmonchan is to try and burn Gengar. That way I don't have to worry about hitting through all of its double teams, I can just let Burn take care of it. It does use Toxic again, but I keep trucking away with Fire Punch. After several turns, I finally manage to land a hit, and I get super lucky and cause Gengar to burn. I switch to a new, not poisoned Pokemon to wait it out. I use Fly, since that guarantees I can at least avoid getting hit every other turn. Then it confuses me, so I switch to Venusaur, and finally, Agatha's first Pokemon gets knocked out. Gee. Aerodactyl almost takes out Golbat, but it just barely lives. That's okay, it doesn't really do anything to me, so I can take care of it on the next turn. Arbok is a different story. Ancient Power is going to be a 4 hit KO, which could be alright, but I had no idea this thing knows Iron Tail. I almost get taken out, so I quickly swap Aerodactyl for Venusaur. I decide to go for Leech Seed to try and keep myself healthy. Then I almost get taken out by Sludge Bomb, so I have to switch again. Lapras takes a big hit from another Sludge Sludge Bomb, but thanks to Leech Seed and Ice Beam, the Arbok finally goes down. Now for the second, more powerful Gengar. At this point, my team is looking absolutely dreadful. Two of them are poisoned, and all but one of them are one hit away from being knocked out. I decide to take a risk with Aerodactyl, and I get an insanely lucky critical hit. One more Pokemon to go. I carefully consider my options. Do I risk Aerodactyl getting knocked out if Ancient Power can't one hit KO this Haunter? Or do I switch to another Pokemon even though none of them really have anything good against Haunter? Ultimately, I decide to send in Lapras, since I'm pretty sure it can take a hit. But then, I get hit with a turn one hypnosis. This is bad. I can't risk staying in and Haunter using Dream Eater, so I swap to Venusaur and hope it doesn't use Hypnosis again. It does go for Dream Eater, so that was the right call. I use Leech Seed and it lands first try. Then Haunter misses Hypnosis. I stupidly try to use Poison Powder, which doesn't affect Haunter. Then it uses Mean Look. Well, here we go. Venusaur is locked in now. My starter Pokemon, the one I began this journey with. It's all up to you. I use Razor Leaf and get it to half health. It misses another Hypnosis. I use Razor Leaf again. It'll get knocked out on the next turn. Leech Seed takes it down to one HP and Agatha uses a full restore. It's okay. My health is pretty high now, so I debate using Solar Beam, but I don't want to risk getting put to sleep before attacking. Plus, Razor Leaf could crit, so I stick with using it. Then sadly, Hypnosis finally hits. Venusaur is asleep. I'm asleep on turn one. It uses Dream Eater and drains me of most of my health. Leech Seed heals me just a little. I go for Razor Leaf again, but I'm still asleep. It uses Dream Eater a second time and it's over. I was so close, literally one HP away from defeating Agatha. I turn off the game, walk away, and think. What options do I have left? I've raised my Pokemon to the highest level possible. Their movesets are pretty solid. I don't really know what else to do other than Try again. Lorelei and Bruno go pretty much the exact same way they did before, and I'm actually able to get to Agatha on my next attempt. This time, I start with Aerodactyl, and things actually seem to go a bit smoother. I'm able to take the first Gengar out before it can set up too many double teams. Since my team is in much better shape after the first Gengar this time around, Agatha's other Pokemon don't give me nearly as much trouble. But I get a little greedy and keep Aerodactyl in while it's at low health, and I find out that critical hit ancient power last time did matter. It gets taken down by Shadow Ball. Reset. I'm feeling really discouraged, but I have to push on. Lorelei goes the same as before, and I feel a little better knowing that my strategies were actually solid against her team. It wasn't just luck. Bruno is no challenge at all, and in no time, we're here at Agatha once again. Aerodactyl comes out with an ancient power, and Gengar immediately uses double team, causing my next attack to miss. Luckily, Rock Tomb is enough to take Gengar out. Gyarados disposes of Arbok with two earthquakes, and gets incredibly lucky that it doesn't attack at all. Lapras deals with Golbat easily. This time around, Aerodactyl has much higher health going into this fight with the second Gengar, so I'm feeling optimistic, and it puts me to sleep. I have to switch to Venusaur, and I'm having flashbacks to how difficult this situation was the first time around. I don't want to redo everything again. Gengar goes for Hypnosis. It misses. I go for Leech Seed, and it also misses. It goes for Hypnosis again, but it misses again. I go for Leech Seed, and it hits. I try for Solar Beam, but I get put to sleep. I swap out to Gyarados, but it also gets put to sleep before I can do anything. Now I switch to the Pokemon that's going to win this battle for me. My guaranteed victory comes at the hands, or I guess paws, of Eevee, the superstar. Agatha uses a full restore, but that's fine. 
Evie prefers a fair fight. Gengar uses Sludge Bomb and poisons Evie, reminding him that he forgot to pick up some ant poison at the store earlier, so he has to go out for a bit. He tags in Venusaur to finish the job. Sludge Bomb doesn't do too much damage to Venusaur, and Leech Seed basically heals it back up. But on the next turn, Gengar uses Nightmare, which could be bad news. I decide to keep attacking in hopes that Venusaur will wake up. Agatha uses another full restore, but Venusaur finally wakes up. Hypnosis misses, so I charge up Solar Beam, and then Agatha switches to Haunter. I decide to Leech Seed again, and and Hypnosis misses again, which is great. One Razor Leaf later, and with the help of Leech Seed, Haunter is down. One more to go. Sludge Bomb crits, which is terrible news, but Razor Leaf gets Gengar to about a quarter health. I decide to switch to Lapras, who gets put to sleep before it can do anything. Then Gengar uses Nightmare again. After a couple of turns, it's clear that Lapras can't do this alone, so I switch to Hitmonchan. It gets poisoned right away and almost gets knocked out by Shadow Ball, but I decide to go for Fire Punch. It's so close. Then, having just returned from the store, Eevee hops back into the fray. Shadow Ball has no effect on it. Eevee endures the poison, barely hangs on to life after taking a hit from Sludge Bomb, and chomps down hard onto Gengar, literally snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. Agatha has been beaten. After the battle, something strange happens. Eevee accidentally trips and falls on a random Thunderstone and becomes a Jolteon. Now, I was ready to run back to Nurse Joy to see if they could reverse the evolution, but Eevee, or I guess Jolteon now, told me not to worry about it. He said he'd make it work. He also suggested I teach him Shockwave and put him at the front of the party, so I do. Anyway, for the first time in this challenge, we're finally at Lance. Jolteon starts off the battle with his new move, Shockwave, and absolutely decimates Gyarados. What a champ. But he wants to give someone else a chance to shine, so I bring Lapras out. It easily dispatches Lance's Dragonair and almost knocks out Aerodactyl in one shot. I have to switch to Gyarados though, since Ancient Power does a lot of damage to Lapras. Lance heals this turn, so Gyarados doesn't take any damage. I hit with Surf, and it's going to be about a two hit knockout, except for I get really unlucky and Aerodactyl gets the stat boosts from Ancient Power, which means Surf is a three hit KO now. I have to switch Gyarados out. I decided to bring Venusaur in, and even though it gets close to taking me out with Wing attack, Venusaur survives and is able to finish the job. Lapras comes back in to face off against Dragonite and just barely survives this outrage. It's a good thing Dragonite is four times weak to Ice Beam. I don't want to risk Lapras getting outsped by Dragonair and getting knocked out, so I switch to Aerodactyl and use two Ancient Powers to secure my victory against the Elite Four. Now, all I have to do is defeat the champion. I heal up my team and use the four rare candies I found during the run to give myself the best possible chance of winning. I step into the room and we begin. My rival starts with Pidgeot. No problem. I've finally got something to deal with that issue. It goes down to two shockwaves. Rhydon is also a piece of cake, getting cut to shreds by a single razor leaf. Next up is Alakazam, who has given me so much trouble throughout this run. It almost goes down in one hit, but unfortunately, it lives and sets up a reflect. Then the champion heals. Once I get Alakazam back to one hit away from fainting, it uses Recover. Then it retaliates with Psychic, forcing me to switch to Gyarados. It goes for Psychic again, doing quite a bit of damage. I use Earthquake, but Alakazam is faster. Luckily, Gyarados has enough health to take the second Psychic and puts an end to Alakazam the Tormentor. Halfway done. I send Aerodactyl back out, and to my horror, Wing Attack only does a little over half of Exeggutor's health. It goes for Sleep Powder, but misses, leaving me free to take it out on the next turn. The champion sends out Gyarados, which is no match for the incredibly gifted and almighty Jolteon. I hit with Shockwave, he uses a full restore. I hit another Shockwave, another full restore. A third shockwave tears down on his Gyarados, and he uses yet another full restore, unable to admit to his obvious defeat. The fourth shockwave ends the struggle. And finally, my rival, the champion, sends out his Charizard, the most powerful Pokemon my team has yet to face in this entire game. The only thing standing between me and victory. My rival's team is made up of Pokemon that were found in the wild and captured taken away from their homes and forced to help him achieve his goals. My team is a family of equals. We came together for much more meaningful reasons. To fulfill a noble scientific cause. To join a powerful team. To symbolize respect for a strong opponent. To protect the innocent. To prove their worth after years of slumber and because I paid some guy $500. With our heads and our hearts filled with determination, I send out Lapras. My opponent's attack misses. Lapras does significant damage. Charizard heals itself with a berry and tries a second time to blast away our chances of winning, but it fails to connect. Then, 
as a team, we take down the giant. I'm Dilly Dally. I beat Pokemon Fire Red without ever catching a single Pokemon. And here's the team that helped me do it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>